In this, our final video of a quick four-part series on the basics of Django, we're going to take a look at the Django authentication system. We are going to hit just the basics of, the, of authentication so we can get you going as quick as possible. To get started with Django's authentication system, we're actually going to use our own app called Accounts. Inside of this, we're going to do all of our authentication type stuff from setting up forms, setting up URLs, and creating custom views for registration. Along with that, we need to add our accounts in our settings file. And then we also need to add two new settings to our settings file. First one we're going to add is login URL, and we're going to point it to accounts slash login. The purpose of this is if anywhere on the site a user is not authenticated, then it's automatically going to redirect them to the login URL setting. And since we're setting that to accounts slash login, that's where they'll go. After that, we're going to set a login redirect URL, and it's going to redirect people to whatever you set it as whenever they log in. In this case, we're going to redirect once we log in to the root of the website. You could also set this to somebody's profile page or a dashboard. Since we want to self-contain all of our authentication stuff into an accounts app and we have URLs that we need to contend with, we need to use URLs and we're going to put those URLs in our accounts application. So the first thing we have to do is we need to edit our main site's URLs and then simply add a route that starts with accounts and then it includes everything in our accounts app inside of our URLs file inside of that. So it'll look like include accounts.urls. What this does is since our accounts app is a module of its own, then and it initializes because we have the double underscore init.py file, then it says, hey, inside of the accounts application, we need to grab the URLs file that's there and initialize everything in it as URLs as well. And from here, we have the next fun task of going ahead and adding all of our URLs inside of our accounts.urls. Since the Django Contrib Auth system actually has a lot of stuff done for us, they actually have a login and a logout view created for us. All we have to do is simply import those into our file and then wire them up in our URLs accordingly. To create our login URL, we're going to create a normal URL. Then we're going to start it with login. We're going to look at everything in our regular expression that starts with login. Then we're going to call the login function that comes from our views. And then we're going to pass it a template. And the template name is going to be account slash login.html. We're actually going to create a custom template and put that in our templates folder of our application so it's all nice and self-contained. And then we're going to name that URL login. And then we're going to also go through a very similar process with the logout. The only difference being we're setting the next page to slash. What next page does is if there's a next page in the URL that we're going to whenever we log in, then it's automatically going to redirect us to that page instead of the login redirect URL that we have in our settings. So if you were to go to a sub page of the site that requires authentication and it redirects you to a login, once you log in, it's going to go to that page that you just came from because in your query string of your URL, it has the next page set. We're just pre-populating it in this case. The final thing that we're going to take a look at in our URL here is adding a register URL. This is so that we can have our users actually register on our site. The Django Auth system has a few things put in place, so it makes this process a lot easier for us, but we still have to do a little bit of legwork, but not very much. In this case, we're going to set where our URL accounts slash register goes to our view, our accounts view, and the registration action inside of that. And we're just going to go ahead and name it register. After we create our initial templates, we're going to come back and create our registration view, which is pretty simple. Now it's time to create our login and registration templates. These are super simple. To accomplish this, the first thing we need to do is create the appropriate folders in our accounts app. 
and then follow that up by starting with our login.html template. Since I've actually gone over what how to use templates and how to use forms in another series, then I'm not actually going to explain what all this code does, but I do want you to see it. And as you can see, it's a fairly simple template and fairly standard. Fortunately, this template is simple enough that we can just translate it over to our register.html like I've done here. We're getting really close to demo time. All we have left to do code-wise is the registration form and the registration view, and both should take very little time since they're fairly simple. Again, I've done forms in another series. Let's go ahead and take a look at our forms code and then just walk through an explanation of the code. The first thing that we're doing is we're creating our own form class, create user form, and we're inheriting from our user creation form. Then we're setting our own email field and using the email field form element. Since user creation form is a model based form, we want to be sure to set that the model is a user and then finally we're overriding the save method to make sure that email is set from our form post before we actually save it to the database and that's all we're doing with our form finally we're going to take a look at our registration view this is fairly boilerplate code we're creating a new create user form form and we're populating it with our post data we're making sure that if we do a post then we're going to check that the form is valid and then we're going to save the form which ultimately saves the new user registration. If it's not a post then we're just going to return back our accounts register.html which was that basic template that we created earlier and then we're going to pass the form data. This is the same thing we've looked at in the past we're just doing slight tweaks to deal with forms. Now it's time for our first demo we're going to show you the process of registering, logging in, and logging out. The first step is to actually register, so we'll go to our account slash register and we'll fill out the form. And then once we hit the submit button, then it's going to take us back to our home page. We can go through the same process with the login. And once we hit the submit button for logging in, it's going to take us back to our home page. Then we can yet again go through the same process with log out and it'll take us back to our home page as well. As you probably noted, there are no actual ways to verify that a person has logged in or done anything at all. So how about we go ahead and rectify that now? First thing we want to do is restrict access to part of our site to only logged in users. And we do this by using a login required decorator at the top of our view function. You can also use the same decorator with your class-based views using a method decorator and class decorator decorators and passing in the login required decorator to those decorators. And once the decorator is in place, no one can actually access that view unless they are logged in. And if they try to access that view via a specific URL, then they'll just get redirected to the login URL that we set in our settings. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to edit our base template and inside of that we're going to modify it in such a way that we can indicate that a user is logged in. We're going to change it where our template says welcome back and then uses the username. In order to verify that a user is logged in, we need to actually call a function that is attached to our user object that is in every single request that we use. And in that user object that's attached to our request, we call the isAuthenticated method. This method is actually a special method because in the Django code for this user model, the isAuthenticated method returns true. And that's the only line. What happens is when a user is not logged in, then an anonymous user object, which inherits from a user object, has an isAuthenticated method as well, and it returns false. So what will happen is when a user logs in, it will instantiate a new user object and attach it to the request object so the isAuthenticated returns true. Whereas if the user is not logged in, then the anonymous object is attached to each request so the isAuthenticated returns false. It's kind of convoluted but it makes sense once you start using it and the good thing is since the user objects are attached to the request, we can actually use the isAuthenticated method on the user object inside of our views as well, in our class-based and in our function-based views. And generally all we have to do is call request.user.isAuthenticated 
and then we can do special manipulation or whatever we want to do in our views accordingly. Now we're at our final demo and on the home page, if we click on a specific LAN party we want to learn about, we are redirected to a login form because we need to be logged in to view the page. And once we log in, it takes us directly to the LAN party we wanted to go to because of the next query string in our URL. Also, if you look at the top of the page, it says, Welcome back, Joe Bob, which is the username that we're using. Now, when we go back to the home page and we try to view the other LAN party, we can view it just fine because we're still logged in. And again, note at the top of the page, we have our username. However, if we log out, we get back sent back to square one and then when we try to visit another page we're sent back to a login screen. This has been a very basic overview of the Django authentication system. Hopefully it gives you a brief run into how to use it and will help you get started in most cases. I really recommend that you take a look at the documentation to dig further into everything that the authentication offers. Specifically, one of the things that I like is the groups system so that you can do authorization as well as the authentication we went over today.